This week on Cruise In. Some of them were not turbos. There's only 300 turbos made. This rare British roadster traveled a long way to be on the show. What's this? My wife put that sticker on. Yeah, sure she did. Some automobile names are rich in history. Where they came up with the name Terraplane, I have no idea. Plus, when you're buying a classic car, what we look for in certain things is, like Ryan was saying, panel fitment. Um, you look at overall appearance. The Buckeye guys give you tips on buying a classic from a car corral. And I'm the type of guy that likes odd things. Then you'll love this. Cruise in from Erie, Pennsylvania's Cruise the Bay starts now. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cruise In. I'm Scott Miller, and tonight we're in Erie, Pennsylvania for the Cruise to the Bay. Now, this is a weekly cruise, and we always get some great cars. The fact that you're bordering Ohio and Pennsylvania, let's go check it out. Okay, Bruce, the plate says I am cool. The window sticker says chick magnet. Is that a little tongue in cheek? It's a gremlin, Bruce. Come on, this is my, my first car in 1970 when I was 16 years old was a blue gremlin. And I'll tell you what, to me, this is cool. And a chick magnet. Absolutely, but my wife put that sticker on. <laughs> Bruce, it's a 77 gremlin. Are you an AMC guy across the board or? Well, like I said, this was my first car when I was, as, as, just brings me back to when I was a kid, man. That's it, you know. When did you get this one? Okay, I found this one in Titusville, Pennsylvania, three years ago. And what kind of condition was it in? And it, it's almost like you see it here. Uh, it had 38,000 miles, has 42,000 on it now. I put a little bit of money into it, but not very much. So there was another person that had the same passion and love for the Gremlin as you did that actually kept the car in great shape when you bought it. Absolutely, they, they babied this thing, that's for sure. So what powers the Gremlin? What gets you down the road? What's the engine? Oh, this is a, this is a standard straight six to 232, the original stock engine that came in many, many, many Gremlins, uh, was inside of many Gremlins, yes. What else is stock and what's been modified? There's absolutely nothing been modified on this car. This car's totally original. So you didn't go for any creature comforts or the previous owner didn't say, I need a CD player or I want a, a satellite radio or I need a... No, no, this is basically your stock Gremlin right here. And as far as maintenance goes, car runs great. You have any pro? You know, I mean, find no, parts? No, it runs great. Just keep it tuned up and away we go. Is there anything that's gonna happen in the future for the car? For this car? Absolutely not. The guy I bought it from made me promise to not chop it. So I'm gonna just keep it as original as I can. You are a loyal guy, Bruce. I can't get you to budge on any of this. <laughs> Stock gremlin guy. Any other features that would stand out that says clearly this is, hasn't been changed or anything else as far as under the hood or, you know? No, I mean, I, all I can tell you is this is the way I found it and I've been running it, keeping it tuned up and away we go. Did have the bumpers re-chromed in Cleveland, Ohio. No front, is there, there's no plate. No front license plate. Okay, you gotta get behind you to find out that you are cool. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If a gremlin is in front of me, it's gotta be cool. So Bruce, I appreciate your time on the show with us. Thank you very much. Marvin, we're on the shores of Lake Erie, but your 1979 Panther came from across a much bigger pond. Tell us a little bit about the car because we, I, I, I can honestly say I've never seen one before. It's uh, 1979. It was made in England. Westwind was the company that made it. It was... Uh, now this is this is the Mark II Turbo. Mark II Turbo. From the, the, the Panther line, how does that designate or differentiate from uh, another car in the lineup? Some of them were not turbos. There was only 300 turbos made. And the rest of them were uh, just regular uh, carburetors on them. If you compare it to something that you see around today, I don't think you're going to find something that has such great classic lines. What drew you to the Panther? I mean, you could have picked any car. I just like the lines of it. I like the looks of them. Now, where did you find the car? I found the car in Carnegie, Ohio. It was in a garage. It was been in the garage for 10 years. 
It, I towed it home and fixed it all back up the original. Now, the, the person that owned it prior, were they the original owner or? Second was, owner. Second owner, second. and they just parked it and said, I'm done with it. And did they put an ad out or did you hear from a friend of a friend? What happened is the, the car was, uh, he had it on a throughway and the hood came out and it broke the windshield and broke the hood and it's quite a bit of damage to it. And uh, he just wanted to get rid of it. So I just happened to run into it, so. Where do you get parts? What's your reference point? Uh, I have another British car. So I'm familiar with the British uh, workings of a car. A lot of parts I had to send to England for. Mm -hmm. And there is a place over there that strictly deals with Panther parts. How many are you aware of that are in the States right now? I only know of, there's one in Pittsburgh, but that's a Callista. That's the next uh, years after the 79. So not a lot of Lima Mark II Turbo? No, not very many. Well, you're exclusive company. Yes. What's under the hood, Marvin? It's an overhead four with a turbo. And how's it go as far as, got a little giddy up to it, a little pep? Oh yes, quite a bit. <laughs> how's the corner? Real good. You can take the corner real fast. Are you ever tempted to just kind of take it out to a road course and see what it would really do? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> How often does the car go out? Uh, every chance I get. Yeah. Every, it's out at least three or four times a week. We go to different shows. No rust problems, nothing visual, frame's all good. So you just gas and go? Yep, that's what I do. Fantastic, Marvin. We appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, sir. Next up on Cruise In. And I didn't know nothing about Hudson's. Well, you faked it extremely well. That's next as Cruise In from Cruise the Bay continues in two minutes. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Welcome back to Cruise In. Well, I found a car down in Mercer, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, back in uh, 92, I bought the car. And I'm the type of guy that likes odd things. So I bought it. It was complete, salt-free car. Uh, originated out of New Mexico. And I just love driving it. Uh, I like things that are different. And uh, this really fills the bill. Uh, for me. Uh, we've loved it. We've had it. Uh, I've driven the car over 100,000 miles since we bought it. Wow. And so you're, we not, drive you're it, not messing around. No, we drive it across country. Uh, last summer, our national convention was in Tacoma, Washington. That was my transportation right there, out and back. Now, how many guys can say they came that far in their Kaiser? Not too many. When I started in the garage business, I used to work on these things and everything else in here. Back back in the 50s, uh, I just, I love the cars. They're great. Uh, I've got another one at home in pieces that I'm working, gonna be working on. Uh, and there weren't cheap, these weren't cheap cars. This car sold for about $2,800 in 54. The cars were only built 47 through 55 here in the States. Mm -hmm. So as the Kaiser mechanic, what's under the hood? Uh, they used the Continental 226 uh, six-cylinder flathead engine. There's a lot of weight in this car. What's this thing weigh when it's sitting still? About 3,600 pounds. And how's it go down the road? Beautiful. It'll stay right with traffic. They claim the car will do 120 mile an hour. Not with me behind the wheel. I'm not going to try it. What's not original, but you know, it's one of the things that you got to keep because just for, for comfort purposes. Things that I did replace, I replaced the seats. I took out of uh, another one simply because we could not find the proper upholstery for the seats. 
Uh, the club has been all over the world looking for the looms and they can't find them. So I've been kind of dragging my feet. I still have the original ones, uh, seats, uh, which I'm hoping someday to get back in it. I'll probably will have to go with something that's close for the upholstery material. Is there the many survivors untouched out there or a lot of guys uh, doing? A few, not many. Yeah. Most of them have had a lot of restoration done to them. There's some that's modified. And you don't have any urge to do that? No, no. Not with this car. Everett, I love it. Love having you on the show. It's the first time we get a chance to have a Kaiser like this. We appreciate you being on with us. I appreciate it. I try to bring them out any chance I get. 1937 Hudson Terraplane. If I can translate that, that's a land plane. Where they came up with the name Terraplane, I have no idea. Well, we have the bullet holes fashioned in, in, in the doors. Uh, tell us how you came about the car. Good close friend of mine from uh, the Air Force that I've known for 49 years had the car. He wanted to get rid of it. He was currently divorced and he's looking for a new girlfriend. Found a new girlfriend and so the Hudson went on the back burner. He said, well, he said, I'm, I'm wanting to sell it. And I really didn't want to buy the car because I didn't want to build another car, another project. But I didn't want somebody to get it and cut it up, chop it up, wreck it. Brought it home and it was in pieces. <laughs> and I didn't know nothing about Hudson's. I didn't know where to start. Uh, I have pictures of the build car when I started it. I did everything on the car except the seats. Ronnie had the uh, engine and transmission rebuilt in Waco, Texas. And it's a small block Chevy, 350 Chevy. The body was in really good shape. It's all steel. It's still got the original frame except for the 69 Camaro front end. I did all the interior, the paint job. I was fortunate enough to get all the chrome came with it. Of course, some of the add-ons, the turn signals and the hood ornament are all fabricated. The hood ornament is not real. That was, uh, I was an uh, over-the-road truck driver and that used to be a TV antenna on, uh, on the mirror. Did a little bit of fixing here and there and fabricated it. It's a plane, this is a terror plane. The two went together. Makes sense. And what made you go with the gangster theme? There's a fella in town by the name of Ed Wharton, and uh, he's got a sticker on the side of his car, and it really looks like a gangster mobile. So I said, you know what, Ed, I gotta have one of those. It's a, it's a prop, you yeah. know, but it looks absolutely real. How's it go down the road? Good. It, yeah. uh, it gets right with the traffic. What about any creature comforts that you decided to add to the vehicle on the, on the interior? Made the back seat a little bit bigger. And uh, the interior, the headliner is all fiberglass. So the fabric will never drop. It's all fiberglass, it's all up in there. The headliner uh, console for the lights is out of a 98 Blazer. Well, if somebody didn't know the difference, you'd take a look at the car and you'd say it's all Chuck, and that's, that's what we like about it. Chuck, we appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up. Definitely a project car. A lot of work, but has a lot of potential. The Buckeye guys give you some tips on finding a car in a car corral. Next on Cruise In. We got a 66 Mustang here we're looking at. Since we specialize in Mustangs and I'm a Mustang uh, Concours expert, um, Ryan's gonna look at here, he's the body guy, he's the head painter at our shop. He's gonna check out this car for paint quality, if it's got issues uh, that are rotted out panels and stuff. Let's just quickly go around, show what people are gonna look at if they're gonna look at it, buying and purchasing a classic car and uh, give them some tips on what to look for. Just the excessive amount of Bondo, um, straightness of the panel when you look down the car, waves, dings, dents, things of that nature, um, panel fitment. When you're buying a classic car, what we look for in certain things is, like Ryan was saying, panel fitment, 
Um, you look at overall appearance, there's also hidden issues you gotta watch out for. If you say you buy this car for 15,000, okay, and then you don't know what you're buying, you could easily have over 100,000 in it, all right? So it's always good to take somebody with you that knows cars, right, and body work. Correct. Um, there's a lot that goes into repairing classic cars. Um, for instance, like this one here, um, the trim molding's missing. Um, that's an inexpensive part to replace, um, but it just comes down to knowing what you're looking at. Okay. But anyhow, this is a classic Mustang you're looking at. It's a um, very popular coupe body shell, um, and it's, it's priced reasonably right at 13.5. I think he wants for it, um, so it's not a bad buy. Um, but we do look for overall overall appearance. Okay. Still here in the car corral at the Dave and Ed swap meet in Canfield, Ohio. Right now we have a Chevy Camaro in front of us that is sort of a project car, Ryan, wouldn't you say? More than like, yes, definitely a project car. A lot of work, but has a lot of potential. This car here as a project, you have to understand what you're buying. It's a project. And basically what that means is tear it down and start over and rebuild everything. Every car is different. We do. Um, we build time and material, like all restoration shops do. Time and material is every man hours worked on the car is billable, plus material. So one restoration from the next restoration, you can never give an accurate estimate because no two cars are the same. So that being said, we do not know the true problems with this car until it's stripped, media blasted, and primed back, and all the parts are inventoried and accounted for. That is correct. You can't tell anything until it's torn completely down to see what lies underneath. Right, and this car has quarter panel work that's been done. It's got um, rust issues in the back top of the, where these Camaros usually rust in the roof line in the back window. Look around, show them some issues with the uh, project here, Ryan. The front nose section would definitely have to be Needs replaced. new fenders. Fenders. Quarters, the quarter gap, fender. You can see the fenders are packed with uh, filler. There's so many things you have to take into consideration when buying a project. All right, we're back here at Dave and Ed Swap Meet in Canfield, Ohio. We have a 55 Fairlane that's really clean here. This is a good um, car corral car um, buy, and it's also priced right too. Ryan, do you want to tell them how clean this car is? It might be. It's a very clean car. Very clean. Restored since 22 years ago. Complete frame off restoration. How's that floor look on this one there, Ryan? It's very clean underneath. Now, something like this would be a good buy. Yeah, it's got nice paint on it, too. Mm -hmm. Quarters look good. They don't look packed with dough. Stainless is good. Car's all, pretty straight. All complete, too, and there's nothing missing. It even has a little crown in the window. Very nice. Very nice car. And it's got a Ford Automatic automatic in it. This is a good car corral find here if you're looking for a 1955 Ford Fairlane. We had a wonderful afternoon at Dave and Ed's Swap Meet in Canfield, Ohio, in the car corral. We've seen quite a few cars and quite a few projects and a really clean uh, 55 Ford Fairlane. Hope you enjoyed the afternoon with us and um, come back and watch Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. Coming up on Cruising. Pretty much what you see is what I, what I got when I bought it. Yes. And we see a lot of truck next on Cruise In. Now back to Cruise the Bay in Erie, Pennsylvania on Cruise In. Nineteen forty-eight Dodge two-ton flatbed. What makes you decide you're going to take this out to a cruise? Well, because I just enjoy old trucks. I uh, drove one of these when I worked for my dad uh, back in 1950. So uh, still got it in my blood. Got to have a Dodge truck. Flatbed gives you lots of options. You can stake it out or you can throw Ex something back Exactly. There. Right. Yeah. Now, what powers something like this? It says a 237 cubic inch flathead six cylinder motor. A six in something that big? Yes. Yes. Two-speed axle, adds eight speeds ahead, and uh, was about 120 horsepower. The down the road, 55 would be tops. Yeah. And that's a little bit too much. Uh, now we run at about 45, 50. Yeah, yeah, you can pop some tree stumps in it, and then you can get it going. Is it hard to slow down? No, it has good brakes. It's big brakes on these, and it's, uh, it's a vacuum brake over hydraulic, so it, it stops real good. 
It really Given does. Given your history with the truck, when did you get this one? Now granted, you weren't 16 years old and it wasn't no, 1950, no. but this is a 48. When did you get this one? I, I bought this truck at an auction a, a little over a year ago, probably two years, been working on it. Uh, most of the work was done, except for a lot of the mechanical work I had to do over. But uh, pretty much what you see is what I, what I got when I bought it, yes. And was it always this color, this kind of like metallic no, brown? No, no, I don't know the original color because they painted over everything, so I don't know. I was hoping it, that it would be red because I like red trucks. That would give it some character. Yeah. Knowing the truck the way that you do when it came to the mechanicals, ever worked on them extensively so you would know where to go? Oh yeah, the, back in the day my, uh, my dad's truck needed a motor. We put a, a Chrysler Spitfire six-cylinder motor in that uh, 1950 Dodge years ago, yeah. A clutch and, you know, odds and ends, kept it running. We had it uh, 12 years and uh, put a couple hundred thousand miles on it. So Great when it truck. came time to work on this one, it was all filed upstairs, Yeah, as they say. I, I, knew, I knew just what it was. I've had a lot of Dodges. I had Dodge cars, Dodge pickups, and, and so I'm, I'm familiar with the, how they're engineered. Right, good engineering. What about the, uh, how big are those tires? Uh, 825-20s, 20-inch wheel, right. The truck would haul, uh, you put a load on it of uh, 15,000 pounds, and it uh, rated at 21,000 legally that, you, that the truck and load would, would weigh, yes. And how many are still on the road like this? Not too many, I don't think. That makes you a proud Dodge guy, right? Yes, it does now, yes it does. George, thank you very much. Love the truck. Thank you very much. Well, we saw a lot of great cars here at Cruise the Bay in Erie, Pennsylvania. Kind of like this 57 Bel Air wagon. We hope you enjoy the show, and we'll catch you next time on Cruise In.